It is August 14th. It's a Wednesday. And after I update you in the account, I'll talk about a little bit about uh, recession risks and also some of the state of the miners, in my opinion, on them, the silver and gold miners. My opinion on them and what I think the future holds in the short term and somewhat medium term. I don't know about long term. Uh, it's going to be kind of difficult to figure that out. But anyway, I haven't listened to one of my <laughs> commenters and bought puts on, I did not, did not buy puts on the S&P. And um, I guess I should have because the S&P had a really big down day as well as a down all the other indexes today on Wednesday, more than 3% in most, in some cases. So it's been a really big down day and I've lost uh, about $2,000 on the account worth of value. And, but I'm still sitting over 60,000 by $2. <laughs> <So> $2 over 60,000. Very interesting graph here. As you can see, it's a negative 2000 handle over here, pretty much, more or less. Quickly through the account, Apple losing $914, which is where the bulk of the loss came from. You can see the options as well, minus $347. C-SPAN losing 42 I have options there as well. Um, other notables, RSX, which is the Russian market ETF, and I'm starting to try to get back into it now that it's dropped below $22. I've been waiting for this moment. It's been over 23 for quite some time, and I had sold, I believe, if I look at the history, let's see, show more. I had sold at $23, right? I had sold a call and I ended up selling 100 shares at $23 and now that it's under 22 I'm starting to accumulate again so I actually bought like 10 shares or so but um, if I have the money I'll sell puts in fact I have sold a put already at 22 trying to accumulate and it's already below 22 so I might start selling puts for 21 or 20 pretty soon but I think most of the reason for RSX dropping for the Russian market is because uh, oil and Russia is very big on oil. Ha they have a lots of um, oil production and things like that, and a lot of the economy is based on that. So I think that's kind of why it's dropping. Oil is dropping, of course, I think mostly because of recession risk, and I'll get into that in a second. So RSX, let's see over here. I actually bought a little bit of NYMT, New York Mortgage Trust. I doubled my position from 600 to about $1,200. It had a modest loss in it. I'm not really getting a better deal than I did last time. My average uh, buy price was like 606. Now I bought at 616 or so. Let's see what the exact price was, 618. Now my average entry price is six twelve, but they give a really nice dividend. It's uh, twenty dollars every quarter for the shares that I had for every hundred shares. So now I'm gonna be getting forty dollars per quarter, assuming I hold on to this position and hopefully I hold on to it for a pretty long time. You know, I calculated this. Um, I calculated this position, New York Mortgage Trust, and. If I had $120,000 invested in that, I'd be getting 1000 a month, All right, which is nice, which, which can pay for a lot of people's rent out there. I think it's uh, you know a pretty decent dividend to be given out. But anyway, moving on. So that's New York Mortgage Trust. <clears throat> Let's see, other notables. What else happened? Um, not much else besides uranium tanking, of course. Energy fuels down $56 for me. And Cameco, another 155. I mean, I'm getting pretty much in the danger zone here. Uh, Cameco having a really big down week and a down month. So we'll see what happens here. I need it to be hovering around $10, but I may have to adjust that target down a dollar now. So see what happens. Um, hopefully, I, I can still make money off of this company. Okay, that's about it with the updates. Um, Oh, look at this drop below 60,000. That's not good. Now, the big news is, of course, the yield curve in, um, inversion that all the news have been covering. 
everyone's kind of panicking about that and a lot of uh, people are coming out that saying this is not a signal and whatnot so which is kind of worrying me because if the professionals are saying oh buy the dip here then i'm kind of worried you know <laughs> i want them i want the people with the money to be saying oh this is a really big recession risk we should pull out of course the media is in a panic though you know they're covering this like crazy and they're saying you know how many times it's been right and whatnot and is it a good indicator is it not you can sense the urgency in their voice so i'm getting kind of mixed signals between the people that are you know staying calm and steady stay the course everything looks fine and the people who are throwing their hands up panic oh recession risk is due blah 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 all these arguments right so it's really hard for me to determine like if I should be a lot more scared or not at this point. Um, of course, long term, I'm not scared because I know that eventually the Federal Reserve will step in, do the right thing, right, quote unquote, and cut rates, accommodate the market. And of course, we're going to see new all time highs and, you know, at least a year and a half or two, um, especially with, you know, elections coming in, no matter what happens post or before elections, we're going to see a new all time high. I'm pretty confident in the next two years it might even come pretty soon um if the fed decides to drastically cut rates from now on and enter into a official rate cutting quote-unquote cycle might see the silver miners i'm sorry we might see <laughs> freudian step might see silver and gold um climb even further than it has so far and the markets will get boosted even though not as much my original prediction is that I'm going to see a sideways market for a long time, maybe 10 years or so. Well, nine years, actually eight and a half years now, because it's been a sideways market for the last over a year and a half, which when I, which is when I originally made that prediction. So, so far, that prediction has been pretty steady. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to profit as much from this prediction as I would like. Um, I did buy really hard into the uh, one dip, and I'll show you, you know, of course, my account benefited from that if I show you the old time chart it looks something like this so I really bought very hard on December you know 24th when that dip happened and I've been rewarded but now you know is it time to buy hard well I have so I'm betting on this uh, little mini dip correction reversing but I don't know I mean it could have a serious correction I just know that if we do have a serious correction it will be reversed again, we'll meet the levels that we're at, at right now and even climb to new all time highs eventually. So that's my like long term bet. So about the silver miners and, and gold miners, like I mentioned this already in a couple episodes, it's kind of worrying me and it's still doing it. It's still the miners are still not benefiting from the price of the uh, precious metals and which tells me that the investors in the sector are not really believing this rally as much as they should be. Now that could be good or bad. It could mean that we're going to have a sharp correction. It could mean that they're wrong, right, which is sometimes the case. And the markets just keep, the, the metals just keep climbing forward, upwards. And uh, stocks are just um, have going to have a delayed reaction. Like silver had a delayed reaction. You know, gold let it. And then silver had a delayed reaction, you know, maybe months, years, I don't know, a long time. Um, since gold's been having the rally, silver's kind of been stalling, and now all of a sudden it has a pop. And um, but the thing is, like companies like EXK, high leverage companies, they benefit a little bit. But EXK, for example, is still in the twos. You know, it was in the threes when the metal price was much lower, just like a few months or a year ago. So it's really kind of worrying. But um, I'm hoping that. With every day that gold stays over five fifteen hundred and silver stays around seventeen dollars, that you know all these companies are making mad money. Now I don't actually have a lot of uh, silver mining. Actually, I only have one gold and silver company, which is a streamer, uh, wheat and precious metals in my account right now. But I have in a different account a lot of um, silver and gold miners. So I'm hoping that that you know rally the the metals prices stay above, and then eventually when um, the earnings come out and they're really really positive for all these mining companies 
then uh, that's when we're going to see another blow off top and hopefully I exit some of my position there. Even if there is a huge long term trend that's started right now, you know, I don't want to be staying in an extremely overbought um, shares prices, right? So I want to make sure I take some profits, maybe get back in later or invest in something else like real estate or some dividends or or just do option selling, which is what I like to do, especially with this account here. So that's what my position here. Um, that's how I feel on the markets action. Um, you know, it's crazy out here what's going on with yields in the in the debt market, sovereign debt market. You know, there's 15, 16 trillion now and yielding negative debt around the world. Um, debt in the U.S. is going really, really, really low. I mean, the 10 years have been slow in quite some time. So people keep buying this debt. You know, they're counting on this huge deflationary forces, and it might happen, but I really think that it's going to be short-lived. Um, I think that because the central banks have increasingly um, gone more public, they're now more in the public eye with their press conferences and whatnot, and that means they're more and more politicized. People know how much power they have now over the market. What they say influences the market quite a bit. You know, it's a double-edged sword. They used to want that because... They wanted to be able to influence the markets with words rather than with actions. But now that they can do that, you know, it's they can also influence it down as well. So it's kind of a double-edged sword, right? Be careful what you ask for, I guess. All right. So I think that's it for now. I just want to do a little update, tell you how I feel about things, and update you some, on some of the account and where I'm sitting at right now, what I plan on doing for the future, etc. So... All right, hopefully you're making a lot more money, especially Scott Trader, right? You're the one buying put, so hopefully you're rating it in right now, man. Good luck, um, and um, see y'all soon. Peace out.